Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. I hope you all are doing well and you're preparing for your exams. My name is Karnama and I know you all are wondering where Gulabsa Ma'am is. Well, I am going to be taking RBI 24 sessions from now on. Introducing myself, my name is Karnama. I've done BCom honors and MCom from Delhi University. I've also worked in a big four company and I've given banking exams and RBI and SEBI exam. Very recently, I gave RBI interview also. So in these finance uh, current affairs session, we are going to talk about everything that has been in the current news related to RBI, SEBI and anything that is going on in the economy. These sessions are going to be relevant for RBI and SEBI exams. Let's get on with today's video. Today, there are two topics that we are going to discuss. Firstly, RBI has brought up trends in progress in banking uh, in 2021 and 2022. Secondly, SEBI. SEBI has now allowed AMCs, asset management companies, who were earlier managing active ELSS to now manage passive ELSS as well. Let's start with this report. It's a very important report, especially for phase two of RBI exams. The report talks about trends and progress in the banking sector in this one year. Firstly, this year is just after COVID. So the entire report is going to talk about how has been the, what has been the impact of COVID on banking sector and also after the COVID period, the pandemic period, how has banks become more resilient? How has the COVID impacted their assets, liabilities, their credit growth, deposits and everything? Firstly, RBI publishes this annually, this report, a very important statement. And also this report is a statutory obligation under the Banking Regulation Act 1949. So this report basically talks about the performance of all the banking sector including cooperative banks and NBFCs as well. Let's get on with the report. What does the report basically mentions? The report talks about that the banking sector has shown a strength in the, its growth. And it's a very important statement that after a gap of seven years, the consolidated balance sheet of the scheduled commercial banks has registered a double digit growth in this year. It's a very important statement. It was a highlight in all newspapers after this report came in. So there has been a double digit growth in this period of con uh, commercial banks, scheduled commercial banks. Also, now talk about the deposit of scheduled commercial banks. So private sector banks have major share in the deposits of scheduled total commercial banks deposits. And when it comes to loans, the public sector banks, I'm sorry, public sector banks have major portion, which is 58%. So public sector banks account for 62% of total deposits and 58% of market share of loans. Now these statements are very important for phase one as well as phase two of your exams. Okay, the number of banks under the RBI prompt corrective action. Another great news. So the prompt corrective action, firstly, we have to understand what is PCA. See what happens is there are certain banks who are not maintaining enough capital or not following rules, for example, CRAR, not maintaining provisions. So banks place them in PCA framework, which is the prompt corrective action framework. So under this framework, there are certain supervisory actions, supervisory actions on these banks. For examples, now they will be restricted from lending to a particular sector. There will be certain restrictions placed on these banks if they come under the PCA framework. So earlier there were three banks under this PCA framework, which now reduced to two at the sorry one at the end of march and in september 2022 there were no banks in the pca framework as per this report i hope you have understood what is pca framework and also that there has been a reduction in the number of banks under the prompt corrective action framework okay in 2021 22 banks saw a reduction in nps another amazing news we will understand the numericals uh, i mean sorry the number of nps as well going further but for now we have to uh, understand that there has been a reduction in NPAs so the asset quality of banks has improved which is shown by the reduction in NPAs this has been because firstly uh, the NPAs have been written off by banks and also there is upgradation of loans the quality of assets has increased banks have been uh, investing in secured assets as against unsecured assets and are going towards safe assets now okay the return on equity and return on assets have also improved in banks what is return on equity it is nothing but the net income when compared with shareholders equity and return on assets is nothing but net income when compared with total assets of banks so these return on equity and return on assets has improved 
in this period talking about nbfcs again nbfc sector has also shown growth in this period however this growth has been at a low pace it is not as it, it could have been and how has it improved it has shown stronger capital buffers adequate provisions nbfcs has maintained adequate adequate provisions the crar ratios uh, have been maintained and sufficient liquidity has been maintained right so uh, the growth has not been uh, much why because of weak demand during uh, the covid pandemic there was weak demand of loans and so the credit growth was not as expected right and also risk aversions corporates were not taking loans due to the already situation in the economy that was there during the covid pandemic right so there was risk aversion and weak demand of uh, loans from nbfcs the asset quality of nbfcs has improved which is shown by the falling uh, gross net uh, non performing assets right and also there were no acceler uh, adequate acceleration in loans this we have understood because of a uh, weak demand and also there was one more point the nbfcs themselves the nbfcs themselves were going for safe assets they were going for safe assets as against unsecured loans right that was one of the reasons that there was no adequate acceleration in loans okay now talking about the crar so the uh, banks have to maintain a minimum capital ratio to risk uh, risk weighted assets right this was uh, yeah so banks and in nbfcs they have maintained more uh, capital adequacy ratio has been maintained by nbfcs okay yeah so nbfcs have to maintain more than 15% capital adequacy ratio which was maintained by nbfcs talking about the credit growth of nbfcs they have shown a credit growth of 7% when compared to in uh, nbfc's credit growth as a ratio of c uh, scheduled commercial banks credit it has been a lot more than 13% approximately 20% right which shows the credit growth of nbfc's has increased and scheduled commercial banks credit growth have also increased right this is important data for phase 1 as well as phase 2 credit growth of banks have been 10 year high 10 year high at the end of september 2022 an important statement right gross non performing assets have improved so the gnps have uh, declined from 7.3% last year to 5% this year right in uh, it was 5.8% in march 2022 both these data are important as per the report a question can be asked as per the report what has been the gross non performing asset ratio right it is 5% talking about capital adequacy ratio of scheduled commercial banks it was 16% right what is capital adequacy ratio so there are certain uh, assets of banks that are risky right so as per these so these risky banks are weighted according to the risks right so banks have to maintain a certain capital as per their risk weighted assets this is called capital adequacy ratio banks have to maintain adequate ratio ad adequate ratio of capital right okay gross npas of nbfcs now this has also decreased 5.8% from 6% a year ago again important data as per the report it can be asked okay provision coverage ratio now what is provision coverage ratio pcr c certain assets of banks can go into can convert into loss and also can be bad assets going further right so banks have to maintain a, a buffer right banks have to maintain out of their funds banks have to maintain a certain portion of their funds as provision in case the assets go bad or loss are are converted into loss assets in future so banks have to maintain a certain portion of their fund as a provision banks have to maintain certain portion of their funds as a provision right in case the assets go loss or are converted into loss assets or are converted into bad debts right contingent liabilities these are off balance sheet liabilities um they were as a proportion of their balance sheet size were 133% which has also increased from 119% a year ago talking about cooperative banks so ye basically cooperative banks ka structure hai so the cooperative banks are divided into urban and rural cooperative banks to urban cooperative banks are further divided into scheduled cooperative banks and non scheduled cooperative banks and rural are divided into short term and long term and in term, when it comes to in terms of the number of banks and also the asset size the proportion of short term rural cooperative banks has been high i hope it's visible 
the proportion of short term rural cooperative banks has been high when it comes to comes to the asset size and also the number of banks so short term rural cooperative banks sabse zyada hai inka role sabse zyada hai in the entire structure of cooperative banks let's get a little data about cooperative banks so the combined balance sheet size has grown and the cagr has been 11.4% in cooperative banks another important data for your exams the asset size of usbs has decelerated jiski wajah se the pura combined us ucbs ka i'm sorry ucbs urban cooperative banks ka jo asset size hai it has reduced because of which the entire data of the entire asset size has shown little decline right led by a contraction of scheduled urban cooperative banks okay march may 94% of urban cooperative banks had maintained their capital adequacy ratio which is 9% minimum 9% maintain karna hota hai and 94% of ucbs were maintaining these talking about the deposits these have contracted over the period see this is a trend uh, this data is showing a trend or how have uh, the deposits and credit accelerated or decelerated these data is also important not in numbers here we have not given you exact numbers because only you have to know ki uh, increase hua hai ya contract hua hai in deposits and credit right moving on frauds see um in finance sections the static section we cover the risks in banking sector right there are certain risks involved in banking ab jo frauds hote hain they create a reputational and operational risk in banks now frauds ka samajhna bahut important hai what has specially what has been the what is operandi of these banks specially of these frauds specially in this period right so the modus operandi has been card and internet based transaction earlier it was advances advance related frauds earlier in the earlier period now the modus operandi has shifted to card and internet based transaction cash frauds bhi increase hue hain also the number of fraud cases reported by private sector banks was more than the than those reported by public sector banks and in terms of amount involved the share of public sector banks was two third again important data for your exams fraud ka acche se yaad rakhiyega these are asked in your exams okay let's talk about credit growth especially global credit growth okay so the onset of covid-19 credit growth was slumped especially during the first half first half of the covid-19 period in 2022 right this is seen in this graph also in 2020 there was a a fall in the global credit and then it was it increased after the 2021 period right talking about inflation inflation was stable before the covid period but it increased especially after 2021 which is something that we have also seen in newspapers every day uh, that the inflation currently has been over the rbi's band of 2 to 6% right so inflation increase hua hai especially after covid and credit growth mein dip aaya tha during the covid period but has accelerated now after the covid period talking about monetary policy see this is a general data monetary policy easing the rbi was earlier focusing on monetary policy easing but after the covid period the rbi is now focusing on monetary policy tightening reason being high inflation there is very high inflation which is above the mark of rbi's 2 to 6% mark that has to be the inflation has to be in this mark now monetary policy tightening pe focus kara ja raha hai to keep inflation in check right so uh, another two important new uh, terms that were mentioned in this report is sdf and nsfr now sdf was introduced in 2022 ye samajh lete kya hota hai standing deposit facility it is nothing but like reverse repo rate just that in reverse repo rate there was use of collateral but in sdf there is no collateral it is a rate for absorbing liquidity in the economy so what rbi does is using this rate which is i think 3.75 Uh, when it was introduced so the sdf uh, it was 3.75 when it was introduced so it is nothing but just like reverse repo rate using this rbi absorbs liquidity in the economy but isme collateral ki zarurat nahi padti hai reverse repo operations mein there is a need for collateral right so banks can uh, keep their access liquidity uh, in rbi with rbi right so it it also marks as the flow rate of liquidity adjustment facility लाइक लैब कॉरिडोर होता है लिक्विडिटी एडजस्टमेंट फैसिलिटी इसका फ्लोर रेट होता है एस डी एफ स्टैंडिंग डिपोजिट फैसिलिटी 
स्टैंडिंग स्टैंडिंग डिपॉजिट फैसिलिटी टॉकिंग अबाउट नेट स्टेबल फंडिंग रेशियो ये कॉन्सेप्ट आया था बेसल नॉर्म्स में तो बेसल नॉर्म्स गेव टू टाइप्स ऑफ लिक्विडिटी रेशियोज फर्स्ट वन वॉज एल सी आर दैट इज लिक्विडिटी कवरेज रेशियो which means banks have to keep high quality liquid assets with themselves right ab ye liquidity coverage ratio kya tha ki banks ke paas 30 days ke liye for a short period of time 30 days is a short period of time 30 days ke liye banks ke paas hqla hona chahiye which is high quality liquid assets bahut zyada liquid assets hone chahiye but nsfr what is nsfr firstly it is medium term resilience of banks राइट ओवर अ वन ईयर होराइजन मीन मीडियम टर्म रेजिलियंस ऑफ बैंक्स चेक करता है दिस मीन्स दैट बैंक्स हैव टू कीप स्टेबल सोर्सेज ऑफ फाइनेंस विद इट सेल्फ राइट बैंक्स हैव टू फंड देयर एक्टिविटीज विद स्टेबल सोर्सेज ऑफ फाइनेंस एंड द मिनिमम एस एन एस एफ आर रिक्वायर्ड एज पर बेसल नॉर्म्स वॉज हंड्रेड परसेंट तो एन एस एफ आर जो है वो मीडियम टू लॉन्ग टर्म रेजिलियंस होता है एंड एल सी आर विच वॉज लिक्विडिटी कवरेज रेशियो इज शॉर्ट टर्म रेजिलियंस ऑफ बैंक्स राइट okay so the second news is sebi sebi has now allowed that the asset management companies these asset management companies are like mutual funds they manage mutual funds mutual funds are nothing but pooled investments so hota kya hai pooled investments jo aapki hoti hain they are invested in certain securities and these are managed by asset management companies so these asset management companies which were earlier managing active elss Active, uh, active ELSS is equity linked saving scheme. Active ELSS can now switch to passive ELSS, but इसके लिए they have to close their existing active scheme. अगर किसी की already existing active scheme चल रही है that has to be closed. Meaning a minimum threshold time जो इनका थ्री years का होता है थ्री years का lock in period होता है ELSS में पहले हम ELSS समझ लेते हैं एक बार What is equity linked saving scheme? So these are nothing but mutual funds. Like I said, mutual funds क्या होता है? They use pooled investments from investors, various investors. They pool their money and invest in mutual funds. And they these mutual funds further invest in certain securities. So I have debt securities, ho corporate bond securities, ho invest uh, equity linked, ho ya index linked, ho all these securities me mutual funds invest करता है. ELSS क्या होता है? Equity linked financial securities में invest करता है. और इक्विटी सिक्योरिटीज में इन्वेस्ट करता है राइट नाउ दस का यूएसपी क्या है दैट दे आर यूज फॉर टैक्स डिडक्शन वाई आर इन्वेस्टर्स अट्रैक्टेड टूवर्ड्स ई एल एस एस स्कीम्स बिकॉज दे आर एलिजिबल फॉर टैक्स डिडक्शन अंडर सेक्शन एटी सी ऑफ द इनकम टैक्स एक्ट राइट इनका मिनिमम लॉक इन पीरियड होता है थ्री ईयर्स एंड द मिनिमम थ्रेश होल्ड इज फाइव हंड्रेड दैट इज ऑल दैट इज वन ऑफ द रीजन दैट इट इज वेरी अट्रैक्टिव टू इन्वेस्टर्स की मिनिमम थ्रेश होल्ड अमाउंट बहुत ज्यादा कम है अब ELSS समझ लिया फर्स्टली लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज एक्टिव एंड पैसिव ELSS। फर्स्टली पैसिव ELSS जो होता है रिसेंटली इट हैज बिकम वेरी अट्रैक्टिव टू इन्वेस्टर्स फॉर अ फ्यू रीजन फर्स्टली दे डू नॉट रिक्वायर एक्टिव बाइंग एंड सेलिंग सिक्योरिटीज लाइक एक्टिव फंड्स। अब एक्टिव फंड्स क्या होता है दीज एक्टिव फंड दे हैव टू इम्प्लॉय म्यूचुअल फंड मैनेजर्स राइट फंड मैनेजर्स को स्पेशली इंप्लॉय करा जाता है हु एक्टिवली इन्वेस्ट एंड ट्रैक योर इन्वेस्टमेंट इन इक्विटी लिंक सेविंग स्कीम्स बट पैसिव इन्वेस्टर्स क्या करते हैं दे जस्ट ट्रैक अ बेंचमार्क इंडेक्स फर्स्टली अ फंड मैनेजर स्पेसिफिकली अलग से इंप्लॉय नहीं होता सेकेंडली दे जस्ट पैसिवली यू नो ट्रैक अ बेंच मार्क इंडेक्स एक बेंच मार्क इंडेक्स को पकड़ के उसको बस ट्रैक करा जाता है पैसिवली नॉट एक्टिवली इन एक्टिव इन्वेस्टमेंट एक फंड मैनेजर को इंप्लॉय करा जाता है हु एक्टिवली इन्वेस्ट इन योर सिक्योरिटीज राइट और पार्टिसिपेट्स इन बाइंग एंड सेलिंग डिसीजन ही ऑल्सो मेक्स डिसीजन एंड पार्टिसिपेट इन सच डिसीजन सो पैसिव म्यूचुअल फंड स्कीम्स और एक्टिव में हमने डिफरेंस पढ़ लिया है नाउ Let's see a few pros and cons of these, right? Why are passive funds becoming very attractive to investors? And SEBI ne kyun allow kara? Again, SEBI ne isli allow kara because there were a lot of demand from the investors for passive ELSS schemes, right? A passive ELSS schemes ka sabse bada pro hai that these require lower operational cost as well as lower expense ratio. Why? Because they do not have to employ a separate fund manager for actively investing in their securities or making buying and selling decisions. इसके लिए एक सेपरेट म्यूचुअल फंड मैनेजर को एम्प्लॉय नहीं करना पड़ता दैट इज वाई द ऑपरेशनल कॉस्ट एज वेल एज एक्सपेंस रेशियो इज वेरी लो विच इज नॉट इन केस ऑफ एक्टिव फंड राइट एंड ऑल्सो लाइक आई सेट दॉन्स ऑफ एक्टिव फंड इज दैट हायर एक्सपेंस रेशियो बट 
पैसे फंड में देर इज अटल लैक ऑफ फ्लेक्सीबिलिटी वाई बिकॉज दे आर जस्ट ट्रैकिंग अ बेंच मार्क दैट इज वाई एज पर द बेंच मार्क योर इन्वेस्टमेंट विल ऑल्सो इधर इंक्रीज और डिक्रीज राइट सो नाउ सेबी हैज अलाउड कि जो एक्टिवली मैनेज कर रहे थे दे कैन स्विच टू पैसेवली ई एल एस स्कीम्स बट या बट ओनली आफ्टर क्लोजिंग देयर एग्जिस्टिंग एक्टिव स्कीम्स राइट ओके सो या so this is the schedule for live classes if you haven't already enrolled you can and also you can download our app you can get all the information about the channel and as well as all the exams preparation strategies mock tests sab aapko yahan se mil jayega let's uh, talk about the questions now okay so recently sebi allowed amcs that have actively managed uh, that have act actively managed the elss to launch passive elss राइट right? ये हमने न्यूज पढ़ ली है इन दिस रिगार्ड विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट इज ट्रू अबाउट पैसिव एलएसएस पैसिव स्कीम्स कंसिस्टेंटली ट्रैक अ मार्केट इंडेक्स टू अलाउ फंड टू गेट मैक्सिमम गेन्स यस दैट इज राइट अंडर द फंड मैनेजर अंडर दिस द फंड मैनेजर एक्टिवली चूज व्हाट स्टॉक्स विल मेक अप द फंड दिस इज रॉन्ग दिस इज एक्टिव एलएसएस स्कीम राइट वेयर इज द फंड मैनेजर इज एम्प्लॉयड राइट ओके सो दीस स्कीम्स इंक्रीज द कॉस्ट ऑफ इन्वेस्टिंग फॉर इन्वेस्टर्स दिस इज अ रॉन्ग स्टेटमेंट दे डू नॉट इंक्रीज दे डिक्रीज okay so the second uh, question this is a statement from a report so in your phase 2 of rbi exams such kind of questions are going to be there a whole paragraph or passage will be there from a report and on the basis of that report firstly you have to identify ki ye kaun si report hai and on the basis of that report you have to answer your questions right so ye ek statement hai from the uh, report that we have discussed abhi rbi ki right trends and progress of banking in india so on the basis of that report firstly you had to identify what is the report and secondly kuch statements aapko given hai you have to answer these first statement is the consolidated balance sheet of scheduled commercial banks has registered a decline in growth this is wrong it there has been a double digit growth public sector banks account for more than 60% of the deposit this is true it was 62% gross nps of banks have improved to 5% like i said ye sare questions phase 2 phase 1 mein bhi aa sakte hain aapke ओके सेम आपको रिपोर्ट दी गई है एंड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दैट रिपोर्ट यू हैव टू आंसर दीज क्वेश्चन इन टर्म्स ऑफ नंबर ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स द मॉडर्स ऑफ परिंडा इज कैश ट्रांजैक्शन रॉन्ग द मॉडर्स ऑफ परिंडा वॉज कार्ड एंड इंटरनेट बेस्ड ट्रांजैक्शन द नंबर ऑफ फ्रॉड केसेस रिपोर्टेड बाय प्राइवेट बैंक आर मोर देन पब्लिक सेक्टर बैंक ट्रू इन टर्म्स ऑफ अमाउंट इन्वॉल्व द शेयर ऑफ पी वाज टू थर्ड ट्रू सिक्सटी था पी का शेयर okay which of the following statements is are incorrect sdf is a measure to inject liquidity in the economy very easy statement this is an easy question absorb liquidity in the economy sdf is the flow rate under lav corridor right nsfr which is net stable funding ratio is a measure of short term resilience of banks no a measure of short term resilience was lcr liquidity coverage ratio and nsfr was medium term resilience for banks right this brings us to the end of today's session i hope you liked it uh, aap apne exams ki taiyari acche se kariye all the best thank you